Hello, everyone. Uh, I just saw this picture, and uh, it says a lot. You know, when they talk about the fact that uh, it, it, a picture uh, can speak a thousand words, just, just a picture, that's what this has really done. And you see these people sitting in, or should I say waiting and living in squalor over such enormous wealth. That's the story of Africa. And let me just read the, this, this message from X, formerly known as Twitter, where, where I saw this picture and also the message that the person put out. It's called R Rural Kemet at Rural Al Kebulan. It's a religion has conditioned us to wait for the Savior. The impact of religion in our minds is more dangerous than the enemy we see with the naked eye. We heaven not avenge our forefathers because we want to enter heaven. Hmm. Africans waiting for investors is this. Let me start from that. Let me even break every of those things because this is this is so critical. This is one of the biggest problems that we actually have. The way religion has been used, the way religion has been weaponized, the way we religion has we've conditioned ourselves. There's this thing about either waiting for the savior or waiting for you just hammering. And that's why you, you there are certain terms. That, that, that we use in Nigeria. I'm, and I'm sure by the time you go across Africa, it's almost the same thing. Destiny helper, this, that. People just wait. Somebody, and everything can be justified using religion. Somebody is going to rob. And I'm, he's praying on his way. And when he, he, he robs, he will say, oh, it's, it's whatever. It's, uh, he go and do testimony. We're sitting down, things that we're supposed to do on, a, on an everyday basis, choices we are supposed to be, to be making, right choices we're supposed to be making, we are not making them. We are just sitting down and waiting and feeling that, oh, there's one Savior, we will pray our way out of everything and everything will suddenly be okay. And yet, for decades, almost 100 years, things are steadily worsened. They've turned bad, 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 bad. We're still sitting down and still praying. The two main religions in Nigeria, Islam and Christianity, the places where they originated from, they are progressing. They are still doing their religion. They are, still, they are still acting. Because, of course, God will not do for us what he has given us capacity to do for ourselves. I'm praying for miracle. I'm going to pray for miracle for things that God is not going to help me do. If I sit down and do this video, and I don't upload it on my, on my YouTube, there is no how I'm going to pray. That God will make my subscribers or anybody going to that my YouTube to see it and watch it. It won't happen. It will not happen. Why? Because God has given us capacity for us to do that for ourselves. It's just like me sitting down here and then assuming that, oh, I want to eat jollof rice. And then the next thing, I pray, I'm praying it into existence. I'm praying, I'm praying. If I like, let me pray and fast too. Let me die in it. I'm not going to see jollof rice in front of me. I either go out and cook it buy it, ask someone to bring it one way or the other. But we sit down, do nothing. You tell somebody to do something, tell him that it's God that we do it. We think we have the patent to, to, to prayers. We think we control God. And then especially when you see, oh, they say, bring this a tithe, bring this one for this, bring, as if we want to use money for, bring this sadaka. It's both in Islam and Christianity, so they all do it. Mala said, we bring this sadaka. I saw the other day where one Mala was cursing out people because they didn't, they didn't give him money. And people were rushing to go and give him money. I said, well, light and I if I had intention of giving that man money. As soon as he started, I'm putting my money away. If God has not punished you for you not helping yourself, there's no way God is going to punish me because I didn't help you. But here we are. Religion, this religion is not even the one that, even our own, that spirituality, even the African traditional religion, that's how it was. Oh, evil forest, this, this, that. People with this, this happen, that will not happen. That's how we sat down you know, for people to come and colonize us, turn us to slaves. And we are still sitting down. Then our descendants tomorrow, they will blame everybody. 
but themselves and us. There was, let me go back to that, because there are so many, you know, interesting nuggets in, in, in this, uh, this whole thing. The impact of religion in our minds, it's more dangerous than the enemy we see with naked eyes. I'll give you an example, and I've always said this. In Nigeria, religion has been weaponized. The political class has really captured it. It's not even a capture because it's a symbiotic relationship. They've really come together and they've kept the people oppressed. I'm sure you've heard what his spy is doing. Is he in Kano where they're arresting people who are not fasting? They've given a warning that anybody that is not fasting, any uh, non-Muslim should not eat outside. I, are you a baby? You are a Muslim. So somebody eating is anything that will trigger you over what? Who are you fasting for? Are you a child? Even children are not triggered. So close of you as an adult, you are not telling somebody that how they should go about with their life. When they were fasting, were you not eating? Christians just finished their Lent. Were you not eating? That now you are not telling them that no, nobody should eat outside because you are fasting, because you are a baby, because you are someone who does not know what, you don't even know what you are fasting for. So now that they have made this one, and then another state that is mainly non-Muslim uh, should, should not come out and say that uh, nobody should fast in their state. Yes, now this is the power of making laws or power of, or, or, of, or, of doing all sorts of nonsense. Let everybody kukuma be mad now. At least nobody, nobody has monopoly of madness. Everybody can be mad. Now they are bringing all of this. Oh, they've caught this person. They've caught that person. His spy is not going after people who are not paying child support. In Islam... You are, if you divorce a woman or whatever, you're supposed to ask those are your children, you're supposed to pay child support for their upkeep. His wife is not arresting anybody for not paying child support. Education is compulsory in Islam. His, his wife is not paying, he's not arresting anybody for, for putting their children, for not sending their children to school, for throwing their children on the streets, all sorts of things. His wife is not arresting. People that are raping people up and that, his wife is not, he's not talking about that one. It's who is fasting and who is not fasting. You know why they do that? They will use religion. So as to be able to tell the people all this suffering that you are suffering, that I don't mind them. It's because we are trying to put Islam to Sharia. What they are doing is political Sharia. They know how to disappear. It's only when it comes to the poor. That's when their Sharia is there. But when the rich are doing that, you know, the Sharia goes on leave. It goes on leave. It's not there at all. It's only against the poor that I say. I did a video some time ago. I said, just watch it. They're going to increase all of those religiosity and everything. Because they will not want to tell you that the bad governance is because, uh, it's because they are doing religion. That's why some people are trying to do this or trying to do that. The symbiotic relationship between uh, those who are in power, the politicians and the political rulers and the religious rulers is that. The political rulers need religious rulers to, to keep the people subdued so that there won't, be, there won't be an uprising. That's why they'll be telling you things like protest is haram. Uh, go and seek for your favor. Why are you disturbing government? The way they say, oh, this government will favor me. Is that what they were telling some of you people in churches? This government, uh, let, it, let it favor. Now, if you favor, you do not favor me. No, as long as, long as you are favored, I'm okay. May it, may it be so be favored. What selfish mentality. You saw another one the other day where one uh, uh, pastor was saying that, uh, oh, uh, your neighbors and your colleague will come and bow before you and beg you for food. In what way do you feel happy that your neighbors are coming to bow before you and beg you for food? In what way is that anything that somebody should pray for? You're not praying for abundance for everyone. This scarcity mentality is what is killing us in Nigeria. You think that if God gives for everyone, it will reduce from you? No, it wouldn't. There's abundance. God has given us abundance in everything. We are the ones that hold and don't know that there's abundance. And so, they, there's that one. They need the people subdued. Then the religious rulers, ah, they need bad governance now for them to be able to set cheap miracles. How else would they tell you that a visa to U.S. is, is, is a miracle? When a lot of countries, they don't even need visa to enter U.S. Those countries, do they have two heads? All they have is a country that works. Nobody wants to leave their country. Even the people in the U.S. will be begging you to come and see them. But here, somebody will finish work. Somebody will finish school, rather. Carry their certificate to go and meet their malams, their pastors, their dibias, their babalawos, and their bokas to bless it for them and do incantation, whatever it is that they want, so that they can get job. 
forgetting that it's the economy that is contracting. That's why you don't have job. If you had a good economy, you don't need job. People leave school before they finish their final year. They already have jobs waiting for them. They already have offers. Yes, that's what they do in schools. Yeah, yes. It's not the one that is expected that you spend 10 years. Before then, one pastor, one mala will not pray for you, and then a miracle will happen. Then not a miracle. Those are not miracles. Those are the uh, uh, dividends of good governance. That you get a job, that you have 24-7 electricity. The other times, there was a time one uh, DC was bad. I think it's a uh, transformer. People were praying, praying, praying on the transformer. Hmm. That they have team on. Then curse us. We behave as people who don't have heads. We're going up and down. 